Bill Newman here. Mark, I uh, I remember on uh, November 22nd, 1963, that Gail and I had uh, gone out to uh, Love Field to see President Kennedy come in, and we did not get a very good look at him. We knew the parade route, so we drove downtown uh, and parked in behind the uh, building across Houston Street from uh, uh, from the school book depository, and we walked uh, down in behind the crowd at Houston Street and Elm and walked in the direction of the triple underpass and uh, uh, when the people played out against the curb well, we just stood on the curb uh, waiting on the president's car to come by. We were about half the distance between the, the uh, triple underpass and, uh, and Houston Street. And I, I remember seeing, uh, hearing the crowd first and then seeing the president's car is it turned off of Main Street uh, onto Houston, and then it went the short block and turned uh, left onto uh, Elm Street. I can remember seeing the president's car coming towards us, and when the president was probably 150 feet or so from us, the first two shots rang out. I can remember a boom, boom, about like that. And at that time, I remember seeing the president's hands come up and looked like he was trying to protect his face. Did the, did the road sign block your view at all? I don't recall the road okay. sign because I was kind of looking up the street. I was okay. right on the curb and looking up towards the car as it was coming towards me. And when those first two shots rang out, I, I thought someone had thrown a couple of firecrackers uh, near the president's car. And I thought, boy, that's, that's in poor taste. A lot of people and, said that. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a, in very poor taste. but. I, as the car got closer, I could tell that something was definitely wrong. I remember President Kennedy looking into the crowd and moving his head kind of with a, uh, an unusual look on his face. And I remember seeing Governor Connolly and his eyes were protruding and he was kind of laid back holding himself and I could see the blood on his shirt. And I, I knew something was wrong. Was at that point, would you say it was after uh, uh, the second shot that you saw Governor Connolly? Oh yes. It, it was, it was some time after the second shot. Uh, the, the first two shots were fired very close together. And Within two or three and seconds, you think? I uh, think so, yeah. yeah. And uh, then there was a time delay there until the car reached us that, and traveled that, probably that distance of some 150 feet. And as the car uh, got directly in front of us, and the president was not much further than I am from you now, mm -hmm. probably 10 or 12 feet, he was directly in front of me. Uh, the third shot rang out, and I remember seeing the side of his head come off. And uh, I could see the a white, and then all of a sudden red. And uh, I turned to Gail, and I said, that's it, hit the ground. It, and at that moment, my fear was that the shot had come from directly behind us on a higher elevation, and that we were in the direct line of fire. Be because of the... Um, reaction to the president or the spot that it had hit him? The, yes, sir. The spot that it hit him, I was looking straight at him and, and I remember seeing him go across the car into Mrs. Kennedy's lap. Did it appear in the right temple area? It, it, it appeared, yes, right in this area. Yeah. Here, the side of the police station and signed an I, affidavit? Yes. A afterwards, uh, just uh, a few minutes after the assassination, Gail and I stood up. And a couple of gentlemen ran up to us. One of them was a local TV personality by the name of Jerry Haynes. Mm -hmm. And he asked us what we saw, and we, and we said we saw the uh, president uh, uh, was shot. And it just happened right before our eyes. And he said, would you come with us to uh, WFAA, to, to the uh, TV station? We said we would. He stopped the car, and the man drove us over there. And we were interviewed on, on, uh, on the air. And then after that, we were carried uh, by a couple of police officers. I assume they were uh, county, uh, uh, with the county sheriff's department, because they carried us to Sheriff Bill Decker's office. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Gail and I gave an affidavit. Uh, and uh, Gail and myself are two of 16 people that day that gave original affidavits as to what they saw. Did anybody try to uh, doubt you or? Uh say they didn't think that's what happened as, as to what you saw or where you thought the shots uh, 
might have came from? Did anybody try to uh, twist your story or discredit it or anything like that? No, no, no one tried to, to uh, discredit our story. We were simply uh, asked what we saw, mm -hmm. and the the uh, court reporter or who, the stenographer, or whoever took the information down, and it was not a exchange of questions and answers. It was simply uh, uh, a recording of what we we uh, we saw. You now that you know, after seeing any evidence or uh, documentation, facts that is, what what is your opinion now of uh, of the uh, charge that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? What do you think of that? Well, I, I question that. I. I um, it's hard for me to believe that it was the act of one lone individual. And you know, there's many theories, there's, there's many uh, directions that you could go in with the Kennedy assassination, who and why uh, President Kennedy was assassinated. But uh, the one thing that is very hard for me to accept is the, uh, is the lone assassination theory. I, I have to believe that there's more to it than that, and that there was more people involved. Myself, I, I, you know, I have no evidence uh, other than what I visually saw that day you know, that just would lead me to believe that that it was not the act of one individual. You were you were only what would you say about ten feet away from President Kennedy when uh, ten, when, uh, ten or twelve feet. We were the we were standing on the curb, and to the best of my knowledge, we were the width of one lane of traffic. President's car was out from the curb. It was not at, not in the curb lane, but it was out some distance from that line. Uh, I, would, I would say about the distance of one uh, one lane. Right. I mean, just before uh, it was just a few feet away, just before the and shot. You weren't right. called before the Warren Commission at all. No, sir. I was not. We were interviewed uh, uh, twice by the FBI. Uh, they they came to our home. And it was just they took down what you said and left, and that was yes, the end of that. Yes, uh, there, there was no, no leading uh, of the witness, so to speak, or anything like that. It was, it was just more of a discussion like you and I are having here. Newman, I appreciate your time. You're quite welcome, Mark.